Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am Mr. Photographer. Dot com. In this video, I'm going to talk about five things you could do in Luminar 4 that will make your images pop. And actually, a couple of these things are applicable to any application that you may be using to process your images, including this first item. I strongly recommend that you do tone and contrast adjustments before you do any color adjustments. Now, I've mentioned this many times in several videos, but I've never really told you why. Well, any application out there today that you may use to process your images by default will work in the RGB color space. That could be sRGB, Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB. And one characteristic of the RGB color space is that when you do any tone or contrast adjusting, you're going to affect the color as well. So it's futile to do your color adjustments first then do tone and contrast because you'll be undoing all those color adjustments you just did or you'll be screwing them up. So do tone and contrast first. So in Luminar 4, go to the light tab, adjust um, highlights, shadows, hit that advanced settings, do whites and blacks, do any smart contrast you may want to do. If there's any other tab that has contrast related sliders, do those. Then after you do all of that, then later in your workflow, go to the color tab and you could do some uh, color adjustments as well. So that way you're building upon your processing. You're not uh, having a step of your processing undo or screw something up that you did previously. And this way you'll work more efficiently and effectively in Luminar 4 and again in pretty much any application out there. So that's number one, tone and contrast before color. Number two, speaking of contrast, Luminar 4 has a great slider called Midtone Contrast. Unfortunately, it's buried in the Professional panel. So if you click on the Professional tab panel and go to the very top tab, Advanced Contrast, you can see you have Highlights, Midtones, Shadows, Contrast Sliders. That middle one, Midtones Contrast, why it's so great? Well, whenever you just contrast in any application, what you're doing is you're making the brighter parts of the image brighter and the darkest parts darker. That, by definition, is what contrast is. But it does so indiscriminately. It will make those brighter parts brighter, but it may make them so bright that they start clipping. and may make those darker parts so dark, they start clipping as well. Midtone contrast ignores the brightest parts and ignores the darkest parts of the image. It just deals with those tones that are in the middle. And you really could make the image pop with the slider without fear of clipping any of those highlights or shadows. So come in here in this professionals panel, go to the advanced contrast and work with this midtone contrast slider. Now the midtones balance slider, be careful because this will uh, change the range of pixels that the midtones contrast will affect. And if you move it too far one way or the other, you may find that you're gonna start clipping. Like in this case, when I move the midtone balance all the way to the left, I'm starting to clip those highlights up there. So be careful. If I go too far to the right, maybe I'll start to clip those shadows as well. So be careful with the midtone balance slider, but the midtone contrast, come in there and it could really make your image pop. All right, number three, and this one applies to really any application out there. Do any noise reduction early in your workflow. I recommend you use do the noise reduction after you do tone and contrast. Uh, in Luminar, denoise is under the Essentials tab, and it's down here. So come in here, zoom in on the image, uh, move the luminosity denoise to the right, color denoise to the right. Wait a second for it to render, because really on just about every application I've ever worked, ever worked on or worked with, Denoise always seems to take a little while to render. So just give it a second and just get rid of that noise. And the reason why you want to do denoise earlier in your workflow is because if you do anything that sharpens the image, and that includes uh, adding structure or detail enhancing to the image, that will enhance the noise as well. And if you do that first, then do denoise later, what you'll find is you're going to be in denoise and you're going to be pushing these sliders way further to the right than you would have if you've done it earlier in your workflow. So doing it early, getting rid of that noise, then later in your workflow, adding structure, adding sharpening, 
and things like that, adding detail. You're more conscious of whether or not it's reintroducing the noise. So actually, you won't move those sliders quite as far to get the detail sharpening that you want, and you'll avoid uh, reintroducing that noise. So do denoise after you do tone and contrast, before you do color, before you do any sharpening structure or detail enhancing to the image. All right, number four. Uh, Luminar 4 has two great sliders in it. It's called the high key and Orton effect. Unfortunately, they're kind of buried in the portrait enhancer and it may give you the impression that they'll only work on portraits, but they don't. You could use them on any image. Um, the high key, this isn't an image for high key, but if you had an image that was a high key image, you could really enhance it with the high key sliders in here, and it affects images that aren't portraits, as you could see by this image here. Or a lot of people like this Orton effect. You could kind of, kind of get this dreamy, ethereal look on your images. And again, these two tabs are in that portrait panel, and you may overlook them or you may ignore them, or may think that they're only for portraits. They're not. These really could give your image a little bit of a different look, and really don't neglect them, and remember that they're over there, and they'll work on any image. All right, so that's number four. And our fifth and final tip in Luminar 4 that will really help you make your images pop is don't forget about lens and geometry. Geometry. Um, for some reason, in um, Skylum's Infinite Wisdom, they buried it under the canvas panel. It's right here. And you may forget about it, but get in here and make sure that you check these boxes uh, to do the automatic distortion correction, move those chromatic aberrations, defringe. Uh, make sure those are checked. Um, if you have buildings or if you're inside a uh, build inside of a room and you're using a wide angle lens, you may have some distortions and you may need to adjust things to make sure that the verticals are vertical and the horizontals are horizontal and so on. Make sure you do all that here. That will really help your image look better and ultimately help you make it pop. So don't forget about lenses, lens and geometry that is buried under the canvas panel in Luminar 4. So that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah.